No, we haven't been live yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just we put, haven't. I just pushed it. Just, That's why we're now we are live. Woo, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, I see it. Well, okay. um, okay. If people are starting to join us. Hello. Sorry we're late. Give me just a second because now I have to set everything up to get it to go to Facebook. Mm-hmm. Oh, Last minute change. We're going to be playing Elden Ring. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. Surprise. Surprise. We're playing Elden Ring. No, we're not. I've only got 100 hours ish in it so far. So. <laughs> How many hours? Probably about 100. I'm not sure. Somewhere in that neighborhood. Maybe more like 80. 80? A lot. <laughs> okay. Just Ow. fell from their bike outside of my window. Oh, no. And good afternoon. Oh, no. <laughs> Please don't have okay. me. Now we should officially be going live on all of the platforms. So, <laughs> thank you for bearing with us all. I think it's working now on Facebook. Hopefully also on World History Encyclopedia's Facebook. So, as usual, I will introduce the stream very quickly. Again, sorry that we're late for people who were potentially just eagerly waiting for us to start. <laughs> um... But we are here today to start our, uh, I think it's six weeks or seven weeks stream of playing Uncharted 4. Um, of course, as always, we have Kate and Alex, our Sasset gamers, and throughout the whole six weeks, we will, um, Dr. Bill Farley will be playing the game with us. And then we'll have different experts on each week after this week, but today we're featuring Bill. So, what is SASA? SASA stands for Save Ancient Studies Alliance. It's our mission to reverse the current downward trend in the study of the ancient world by engaging the public and bringing together students and scholars to share their oh, to share their passion for the study of the ancient world in order to inspire a vast new generation of students. So, of course, we do this by doing all these different kinds of live streams. We've been doing some archaeo tourism stuff lately too. So, go and check out those recordings on our platforms, which. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, Discord, LinkedIn, etc. by searching Save Ancient Studies Alliance. Please do follow us to get the most up-to-date information about us, information about our events, and of course our live streams. Uh, some protocol for the event, please be kind and respectful. Please be active in the chat. We really like to hear from you. It makes the streams way more fun and interesting when people are active in the chat. Again, these uh, will be recorded and saved on our social media platforms. And then, of course, spoiler alerts, uh, as always. Not that I don't know anything, so I'm not going to make a spoiler alert. <laughs> not from Kate this time, I guess. Um, and then... Last but not least, if you like what you see, please consider becoming a monthly donor of SASA. You can do this for as little as $3 a month. Um, and it and you can do it through Twitch directly and through Prime, or you can do it on our website. So with that, I will hand it back over to Kate and Alex and our guest expert, Bill. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you. Um, welcome back and welcome everyone who's waited. Sorry, we had, of course, tech issues as one does. Uh, this time we are attempting, valiantly attempting to stream from a PS5 yeah. um, mm -hmm. onto a computer and use OBS and all sort of <laughs> questionable stuff. So welcome. Um, we uh, change of scenery, change of uh, era, change of type of game, more or less. Uh, we will be playing through Uncharted 4. Um, so welcome back, Alex. Uh, good to good to see you again. <laughs> again and welcome. Very happy about that. <laughs> I am ecstatic, as you know. Um, and welcome to our esteemed uh, player guest, uh, new host, uh, Bill, Doctor Bill Farley, um, with his fantastic curly hair. Like if if my hair was shorter, you would see that we have two curly hair people here. Um, and so, Bill, um, who are you? What are you doing here? And what is what are we going to do in this series? Well, uh, esteemed is an is an awfully powerful word. So, yes, my, my <laughs> name's Bill Farley. Um, I'm a, um, a professor of anthropology at Southern Connecticut State University, which is, as the name suggests, in Southern Connecticut. 
state, uh, and it's uh, the other the other New Haven University, the better New Haven University. And um, I am an archaeologist, and I've been an archaeologist for around fifteen years. I'm uh, I work in Southern New England. I work in locally to where my university is. Uh, and I'm a historical archaeologist, so I mostly study 17th and 18th century, especially um, interactions between Euro-American settlers and Native Americans. Uh, and so uh, I also am really interested in digital archaeology and vir virtual archaeology. So I run a YouTube channel called Video Game Archaeology, which is at youtube.com slash C slash Video Game Archaeology, all one word. Uh, or you can follow me on Twitter at Archaeology Game. And uh, please do that. Check that out and make videos about all kinds of different games, including I have a video up there about Uncharted uh, and uh, as, a, as a method for teaching about archaeological method, methodology. Um, so check that out if you're, if you're so interested. Uh, and we're going to be playing Uncharted 4, which is, uh, despite having made a video about it, I, I like Uncharted. I've played all the Uncharted games, but I'm not like a huge mega fan of the series. I'm not writing fanfic. I'm not like... That guy, uh, which is which is great. I mean, uh, so I have no like great. Def I'm not going to defend this game as some amazing great piece of art, but it is a very fun video game. It's very cool, and Nathan Drake is a great uh, um, person to think about as a kind of quasi archaeologist and the ethics of what he does in the game. <laughs> not not precluding the hundreds of people you murder in it. Uh, we're gonna think more about I the mean, archaeological who, who ethics. I mean, who amongst us hasn't, <laughs> yes. right? So, Isn't oh, that like what, one of the first classes in archaeology school? Like, yeah, yeah. I was joking yeah. when we were yeah. doing the tech stuff that this game has a uh, has a trophy called Ludo Narrative Distance that yeah. you get for killing a thousand people. So it's a it's right. a it's a you know it's hard to get a thousand in this game. Like you, it's. You, it you have to replay it. I think it needs. Uh, I think it probably takes about two playthroughs to get to the thousand. I think so because, like, I remember in, in in Uncharted Three, I uh, like I died a lot in that game, and I only had like five hundred at the end of it. Yeah. So in order to get a thousand, that's hard. Yeah, and I think there's honestly like, less. There's less combat. This game is less combat centric than the previous yeah. games. Uh, I think True. Each, each... it's a more mature take on the series. I yeah, think like exactly. it, it's like one two, three is like this hyperkinetic exploration of like um, like w w what Nathan Drake is. Like it, it's it's action. Like literally an action film. Like it turns a video game. But this one is more like reflective on that. I, I feel like it, it, it's more mature character that Nathan Drake is. Like you can see more character development from three to four than you did than you do from one to three, one two or three. I think. Yeah, it's so. very much like a character study in in Drake yeah, it is. and the people around him, and we'll see that as we play the game. But you know, it's uh, mm -hmm. it's it's very much about him getting older and about his relationships with his. Uh, with his with his wife, with his brother, with his uh, you know with Sully, his sort of adoptive father. It, it, it does some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, so that'll be and of course it's got lots of um, I don't know it, for all of that, I don't think it takes a particularly more nuanced uh, look at the at the the grave robbing, you know treasure hunting elements. Uh, it's it's it, it, well no, that'd be an interesting that. thing to explore is whether we see any yeah. maturity, in that realm, and I, from what I remember, I haven't played the game in a couple of years. I don't think so, Alex. You're sort of playing it right now, sort of actively, right? So I am. Maybe, yeah. you, maybe you know, uh, you remember better than me. I haven't played this in two or three years, so. Like I, I I'm currently still playing through it, but I, I, I've read things about it like from years ago. But yeah. like I, I played Uncharted three like when it came out, and then I got uh, the Uncharted collection for uh, like one, two, and three for like five euros or something, like very, very cheap. And I played that again. So, but so yeah, let's get to uh, to the game. Yeah, let's get yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, so while it. we get to it, um, I have no issues admitting that I don't know shit about this game. Um, <laughs> I never played it, and this is this is my villain origin story. Um, when I think one of the first one came out in Italy, it was marketed at least in Italy as oh the male version of Lara Croft, and I was like, who needs that? We have Lara Croft. Who needs you know a male version of her? Like enough of that. Give us representation. So I never played it. Um, so I'm gonna have to ask, uh, what what is this about? Who is this guy? What is going on? I, I know nothing about it. That's good. Um, 
so I'm I'm gonna be asking the stupid questions. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna be the uh, the person who doesn't know anything. Is like, so what is this? That's that's well, good. I see skeletons, so that's good. Also, that's yes, good. trigger warnings for human remains. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah, it's it does it does have a lot of skeletons in it. That's a good point. They're yeah. digital skeletons. They're not of real people, which is which is nice. Um, but it does it does in, include uh, include yeah. them right here. Some poor pirate fella. Uh, although we're gonna be we're quite a while before we start running into skeletons. I suspect. Um, alas, yeah. alas! I saw that we were running into nuns in the in the tutorial, which is I mean, oh, just yeah. as scary. Yeah, uh, yeah, so you know. All right, so, so you content warning. <laughs> yeah, content warning. There's nuns, nuns, <laughs> nuns, and they smoke. Uh, so here we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that should be the that should be the title of the stream: smoking nuns or what? <laughs> All right. So the only thing this is a totally fresh um, file because I reinstalled it on PS5. So the only thing that the continue here is just from our tech demo. Mm-hmm. So we're just gonna hit yeah. new game and All right. let it happen. We would you like to keep your treasures and players? No, I don't. We want to go in no. and let's play it on just normal mode here, moderate, right? That sounds yeah. right. You can change yeah. it any time. So if I'm dying too much, we're gonna turn keep lock aim off. <laughs> Camera assist. We'll just keep those off for now. Yeah. yeah make sure you uh, enable subtitles, though. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So let's see here. I can't remember if subtitles are on automatically or not. If not, I think we'll they might be. Otherwise, you can turn them on. We'll like, turn them on as uh, soon as the game starts. Yeah. 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 You, you you might have done it already. There's not even really an opening cinematic. Like it, it really just throws you like right into the action. Little one. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, I like the coin. It, it already tells us that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Pirates. Gold. This one's about pi- gold. All clearly. of the games it's always have, ask that gold. Yeah. All of the games have a kind of a um, like a kindergarten entry point, right? And this one is pirates. That's the like. That's like. Yeah. A, this one was about pirates. Yeah. Uh, you why know. is it about <laughs> so, pirates? I don't know. Who I don't is, know. Who is Nathan Drake? <laughs> why? Right. What's why is his last name? Drake. That is that is a very famous last name for well, not yeah. privates. We don't call them privates. We call them privateers. Yeah. Right. Nathan Drake, for anyone who doesn't know, is the let's say alleged uh, descendant of Sir Francis Drake, like yes. the, the 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 big pirate. Uh... The, the 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 great captain paid yeah. by the Crown of England to uh, appropriate a Spanish gold. Um, and the vanquisher of the Spanish Armada and all of that, uh, also a great man with a sense of style, you know, that has, <laughs> yeah. you know, that surpasses time and space, uh, and beautiful earrings also, because, once again, style of the time. Um, also, I was today years old when I made a connection between Nathan Drake's last name and Sir Francis Drake, so yes, yes. <laughs> good Again, morning. The, the, the first scene of the first game is uh, you're on a boat, like much like you're here in the opening, so we got, we're immediately into the action. But like uh, the first scene of the first game is Nathan Drake uh, digging up, I think, Francis Drake's grave from the ocean, yes, and retrieving yeah. like a ring from it uh, with hidden, I think, coordinates or messages or something, and, and this Latin um, phrase "Sic parvis magna," mm-hmm. um, and I, I think they translate it as uh, "Greatest from small beginnings" or something. Um, but so, like here. It it, it, it it immediately draws you to the action. There's not much of a like a, a, a prologue to it that usually comes later, as we'll see. Um, but that is like how Nathan Drake, who, who he is, like he's he, he's the alleged descendant of Francis Drake. Yeah, I am assuming he did not document that um, underwater excavation. He did. <laughs> no. Um, Going off the, the amount of gunfire that followed, I think the authorities. <laughs> <laughs> no, and they never they never pretend that he's a an archaeologist or that he cares mm. about context or anything like that. Yeah. Unlike some other like Indiana Jones or something. Um, that um, yeah, they start going off very cinematic here, almost getting cut in half by a, you know. Um, I think that this is actually an outward allusion to that opening sequence in Uncharted One. I don't know if you think that. Yeah, yeah, I think it's. Uh... Yeah, but I also think it ties into Uncharted Two, but I'll talk about that later. Uh, but it's like we said, this game is kind. Of, it's the, the the final game with Nathan Drake in it in the Uncharted series. Because afterwards, they had like this expansion, Boss Legacy, with uh, different characters. Okay, but I think this one is 
like a, a sort of swan song to Nathan Drake. So they're trying to combine elements from the different games. But also, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see this I think next week or maybe the one after. There's some ties to uh, The Last of Us, which is also made by this game studio, not, not Naughty Dog. Um, and because this one, I think, I, this one was 2014 or 2015, I think, for. And Last of Us came out 2013, if I'm right. But well, this one is 2016, actually. I'm sorry. Um, so they, they, they have some, the, the gameplay elements that tie back to Last of Us as well. I'm so rusty. Oh, okay, well, I, I see I see a lot of archaeology. Um, so, <laughs> it's like, yeah, who of Mox that hasn't, hasn't shot people? Um, so uh, so he's, he's not an archaeologist, like, they're not even pretending he's an archaeologist, which is a step forward from, from uh, Dr. Lara Croft, who has actually a PhD, um, but destroys things and, like, I don't know, plays Senate with, with, fan, with ghosts in Egyptian tombs. Don't even, let's not get started in that. We will get to that. Um, so he's just, he's like a, he's a treasure hunter, like he's, is that, is that like his, his job description? Yeah, like he's explicitly... Nathan Drake, come a treasure hunter? Yeah, basically, yeah, and, and we're gonna see part, part of the, part of the, the twist of this game is that he's given up that life, but he's like a professional yeah. treasure hunter for money. That's, 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 I think his, you know, job, yeah. Whereas, uh... So... Oh yeah, go ahead. So like uh, it, it, even like Indiana Jones, for example, like he he, he studies archaeology, like for his job and everything. He, he is he's tenured. He's tenured, but Nathan Drake is is only like only like he he does this out of interest. Like he, uh, as a kid, as we see here, he's always been fascinated by these treasures from uh, past times. I think his mother as well, like she was fa uh, obsessed with the fan Francis Drake story, stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, so there's I mean. He, he has this notebook that you'll be scouring through as well. Um, but he is not like he didn't study archaeology at college or something. Like that. All right, yeah, I see. I see the the first nun, so the yeah. nun counts. <laughs> so this is why I think it's also like Uncharted 2 because you have this one opening, like really like in media it has like you, you start in the action and then it goes back to how you got there like with oh, yeah. the flashbacks and the prologue and Uncharted 2 did that like amazingly like it's one it's been called one of the best PlayStation games of all time because from the moment you play the game you're immediately drawn into the action and you want to know how did he get there like mm -hmm. uh, you start in this train that is like over this cliff and it's falling down and you need to uh, climb out like this Jurassic Park scene but it's you, you kind of I mean, you want to know what happened, and did they try to replicate that here? Perhaps not as good as they did it with Uncharted 2, but I think it's it kind of ties back to that as well. And it's a long time before we get back to that yeah. scene. It's like many hours of gameplay, and it actually they do a good job. I think they did this in Uncharted 2 too, of kind of faking you out. You always think like, oh, this is going to be the part where we get back to the beginning, and then yeah. it's not. <laughs> it's a it's a a lot is going to happen. But they've they in several of the games they explore different periods of Drake's life and like yep. in Uncharted Two you learn about him when he's a little older than this right um, mm. he's uh, when he meets, Uncharted Three that's Uncharted Three the one where they really yeah, focus yeah. on his relationship with Sully with, like the the museum scene in Cartagena yeah, yeah. It's, uh, that's Uncharted Three yeah and this one they explore this part of his life because. Each of the games is sort of focused on a, a personal relationship in Drake's life, and this game is going to very much be about his relationship with his brother, who we never yeah. actually even heard about before this game. No. <laughs> and we're and it's seeing... interesting that, it, 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 so they, they really delve into Drake's backstory here, and it's interesting that for the movie that came out, uh, I think exactly one month ago today, um, they use this entire thing with his brother Sam as, the, as one of the main threads so it's interesting that when they make turn this game franchise into a movie they go to this game which is the most recent out of all of them and like you you would expect them to start at the beginning like uncharted one but they they take a lot of this stuff from this game where they, they talk more about this backstory into the movie like how they adapt that in, into to a film which if you've seen it i don't think was that good it could have been much worse but it wasn't that good yeah. We actually have a uh, a conference talk coming up on that, mm. on the movie Great. and oh. the looting. Yeah, at the oh, wow. yeah, 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 uh, the Arc Gam Con 2022. 
Um, uh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've, it, it has been decided. Uh, so there is, there is, there are going to be opinions. Uh, once again, I went into the movie having never played the game, so I was, mm-hmm. I was, you know, I was trying to figure out what was happening, and then the archaeology me kicked in, and I was like, oh my god. Um, but you know, is this the same nun? It's the same nun. There's only one it, nun, it, I think. There's only yeah, one there's nun. nun. I think there's yeah. only there's, one nun. Ma'am, Ma- sister, not ma'am. Uh, yeah, I also see that yeah. his uh, his fashion style has not changed, uh, because I've we've seen him like once grown up and he's still wearing the same exact clothes. Yeah. So good for him, consistency. We like the consistency. <laughs> he's consistent for sure. So they, this is a very clever. They do a clever job with uh, this. Is obviously an elaborate tutorial that we're playing through right now, both the opening mm-hmm. sequence and this whole sequence. So they're they're teaching me how to do all the. Uh, I don't remember how I do this. Hold. Oh, and hold circle. I get it. I see what I was yeah. talking about. So she's... There's the smoking I was talking about. And you have to sneak by. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen. We're, you know, this is what... What year is this supposed to be? Like, when he's a child. Um, this is... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't think they specify. Pro- I hmm. think it's supposed to be maybe like the late 70s or early 80s, if I had to guess. Okay. Based on how okay. old he's supposed I to be. Was- well, maybe. I don't, yeah, my, maybe, yeah. I mean, they look at that. Because, I, because we're, we're going to go into another like flashback, but it's a little bit for, uh, later in his life, and that's 15 years before the game takes place. So this, yeah, this should be like late 80s, I think, yeah. Yeah, so that, I mean, let's use the, we can use the material culture to try and answer this. We've got this cool... Oh, yeah. That's very true, that's very true. <laughs> let's, cool, uh, let's do some archaeology well. <laughs> I mean, I'm sitting next to a record player here, and there's well, a... Look no- at that TV. There's a, yeah, there's yeah, a, yeah. No- a knobbed Ooh. CRT television back there. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I mean, these games have so much like visual detail. There's so much to look at. Yeah, I, I guess candles instead of lamps. Fun, ar- fun archaeology. Uh, that's that's because that's because the Vatican doesn't, you know, it's stingy, uh, and so you have to use the candles yeah. instead of the. This this is like Vatican bashing hour. I'm sorry, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I've mean, I've you know I I've horror stories about about people going to school and 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 being raised by um catholic institutions um including as we see natalie so is he an orphan he yes they're orphans. yeah like are we are we talking about like the hero origin story in which they're an orphan and kind of riffraff trying to get them off the street but somehow he becomes a like a, a professional looter yeah you pretty much kind nailed of it. Like that. Yeah. yeah, he and his brother. He, he and his brother are. Well, we're gonna learn all this, but he and his brother are kind of a team until something happens, which we will learn about. Uh, mm. And then there's a reason why we don't, why we don't uh, uh, see his brother in any of the original games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they're giving. Which I think a, was a little bit weird. Like, if if it's really this big part of his life, then they should have like had him. In the first round, like at least mention that he had a brother or something. Yeah, like it's a weird addition at this point. It is, yeah, and 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 the reason why he's not around for fifteen years is kind of like a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit like you get you gotta suspend your disbelief a little bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. And honestly, I think his reaction to being reunited with his brother is uh, should have been weirder. I don't know. We'll get. We're gonna get to that part. We'll get there. Yeah, we're gonna get that. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually not. That's really like, so. like for this stream, we couldn't sort of like introduce like the the, the series, the characters, like um, context. Yeah, and in, and in terms yeah. of uh, yeah. in terms of gameplay, you've kind of seen it. The tutorial does a good job of that. It's shown us sort of all the different things we're gonna do in the game. We got shooting. We got kind of uh, action sequences. We got climbing walls, which of course is what the series is sort of known for. Um, what every archaeologist does. Yeah, a <laughs> little bit, little bit of stealth, although that's thankfully, blessedly, not a huge part of the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, and then some. Well, I don't know. We're not going to do any. The puzzle solving is probably the most. Uh, yeah. The, the thing that isn't shown in this tutorial that we'll do later and that obviously becomes an important part of the game. All the perfectly yeah. preserved, intact, massively complicated, made of wood, hundreds or thousands of years old puzzles. <laughs> yeah, everything perfectly functional. Ooh. Yeah, and then they, they go through it, they go through all the puzzles, everything breaks, like the bridge gets destroyed when they pass it or something, and then they find the treasure, and then two seconds later, the, the, the Nazis show up with their guns, and they, they did the entire thing, even though all the bridges and everything have, have been destroyed 
So it's yeah. It's expectations now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just weird. And it's, it's like in every single puzzle game. Every about the puzzle in this in this game. Um, let us uh, remember that um, you know, great archeo archaeologist uh, Schliemann uh, did dig with yeah. dynamite. He did. So, sure. right. I think there's one uh, there's one scene in this game where they like uh, someone or some one of the characters says. Uh, who does uh, who, who who digs up pressures with dynamite or something? <laughs> like Archer Schliemann. Yeah, we're gonna, <laughs> see, gonna see that. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I yeah, think yeah, that's so maybe like an explicit reference. Is what they're going for there? It I don't know. Might be. Yeah. I mean, it is. I mean, it is. It is pretty famous, right? Then I mean, archaeology is a pretty young discipline. Um, and looting hasn't really stopped. I've been following the news with a lot of museums giving back. Um, artifacts that have been, let's say, acquired uh, mm -hmm. in less than clear ways. Um, so we can't, we can't like really pretend. Oh yes, that's just what happened, like in the past, right? No, it's it's still kind of happening. Mm -hmm. um, and we will actually talk like later in the series about you know restitution and and the ethics of what you can keep and why you know where does what you dig up go. Um, <laughs> oh my God! Well, he goes <laughs> to hell in this yeah. moment. <laughs> I, uh, that counts one. <laughs> Ouch. I forgot how to. There's a way to skip cutscenes. I can't problem. remember how to do it. Is it in here? Uh, I think it's press options or I something. Did. I wish I thought it's got to be a way to do it. But that's that's fine. Yeah, it's okay. I no, I was yeah. trying. I I that's my first death. Somebody noted. Uh, I uh, I <laughs> yeah, I just. I pushed the wrong How many button. minutes? <laughs> yeah. Like I said, it's been a while since I played like, this game in mind. I'm a little rusty on which buttons do which thing. You know? <laughs> and I'm getting it, It's interesting that this game adds this entire element of the ropes like that you carry. And yeah, I think that's one of the most overt references to Indiana Jones. Like, like mm. they're swinging. Like the, 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 um, it works exactly like an Indiana Jones rope, yeah. 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 Things we all do, right? So maybe I just... Okay. <laughs> So here's so if I had known that when I was studying, I would have uh, picked archaeology. Oh, you have to go around the corner. That's what I did wrong. Okay, I see. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Right, right, right. Oh, so there's like some some light parkour. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, and and that's a big part of the game. And yeah, they definitely um, f focus in on some of the new things like the rope, and also that like we're gonna see them a couple times like slide down roofs and then have to jump mm. off the roof. That was yeah, a, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was a new that was like a new thing they added and they, they were well. clearly having yeah i mean this is one of them right here right because that's sort of uh they were very excited to show that off <laughs> in this tutorial i think yeah okay and then in one of the levels it, it is like you're, you're constantly doing that but i won't spoil which one or where spoilers hey for once i'm not like the one whoa 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 <laughs> right, so just one. don't think about it no you should think about, about it, it. Yeah. I mean that's long jump it's like it's not the easiest thing in the world yeah. I have to say why they why they I, I I don't know what the what the what the fictional reason is for why their master parkour artists at age you know 12 and 15 or whatever here that they're supposed to be right yeah at the old time. ripe age yeah I, I guess you're just supposed to accept like well they're they're rapscallion orphans yeah so they yeah uh, I mean, do we? Is it is it the uh, the hereditary ease of blood that they are getting from Sir Francis Drake, and therefore they have the abilities? Maybe, maybe that's what it is. Push it's probably that towards goal and press to crouch. Got it. Jump coming yeah. up. Okay. Woo. Like all of these mechanics are things you find in the, the Last of Us as well. Like they mm. think they, the, like oh especially in Last of Us Two. I, I, I did this exact same thing. I also almost fell here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you have to do a little, it's a tiny little distance and you have to jump it, which is surprising. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like in Last of Us 2, like, you're all always, like, you also, uh, there, there's ropes that you can use and you're always climbing and crouching or even, like, you're, you're just, not even crouching, but you're just crawling on the floor. I lost him. I forget where, I'm not really sure where I'm supposed to go. I think I'm supposed to go. Uh, I, it's, it's, oh, wait. Down? <laughs> Uh, it, th there's a button that you can see your companion. I think it's up or down. I don't know, but maybe it's not active in yeah, this I don't tutorial. Think it's yet. Uh, I guess I just pick one, and if I die, I die. Right? It's gotta be this okay, way. Yeah, I sure. I, feel, I don't think you're you're supposed to go down here because there's a tutorial thing for that 
and it's, uh, for that oh, mechanic. Where's, and that's where's this cute. man? This man has left us alone oh, on no. a rooftop. Uh, <laughs> let's do this. Go on that adventure, he said. It will be fun. Oh. Nope, <laughs> that wasn't right. Yes, I mean, yeah, kidnap a miner from, from a nunnery. It's going to be fun, they said. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now I can let's pay attention to what I'm supposed to do. Let's pay attention to what's going on. Yeah, we oh, were yeah, not yeah. on a oh, Okay, I'm supposed okay. to go up. Okay. Oh, okay. There okay. we go. Fair. I lost track of when I was paying attention. This is like because I was paying attention to what you guys were saying. This is also like, like basically what Mary Poppins does, but at, le at the very least, she's magical and she's you know she's also putting children in weird situations. But at the very least, she can fly. This guy just yeah yeah you keep my jacket and then we just parkour around things. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes, but also no. Um, wait, I didn't catch. Where are we? Like geographically, what city is this? Um, what city? It's... And this, the, 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 what this, place? The orphanage is called Saint Francis as well. Um, but you're but not like, helping. There's Saint Francis uh, everywhere. No, but like, you, aren't you somewhere in the is... Caribbean or like in the? In no, the... it's in America. Is it? Oh God, then I don't uh, know let me look it up. Um, yeah, I don't remember because I don't think that they've told us. But jump that high. I don't think. No, we don't know. Um, All right. Ooh. Let me look it up. Yeah, there's nice gotta be a wiki huh? that'll tell us. Yeah. yeah. It might even be the movie. I don't. Oh, it's in Boston. It's supposed to be. I was oh. about to say the, oh, yeah. the architecture looks very, very British to me. But if you say if, you're, if we're in the U.S., I would have said New England. I mean, I'll be honest. Um, this is actually this is a real Boston skyline. I think that's supposed to be the old state house there. It is actually. Yeah, I don't know that church, but uh, oh no, I know that church. Wait, <laughs> next door. It's not the cathedral. Um, it's another one. But yeah, if it's the church I'm thinking about, then yes, probably. Um, okay, so yeah, so New England. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, Perfect. well, there you go. I've lived in Boston for three years. Yeah, but, oh, is that a, <laughs> is that a sink point? And then I realized. All right, yeah, here's the one. Need, I'm... I mean, there is an, an Assassin's Creed Easter egg in this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're like on another continent, though. Uh, yeah. There is this an Assassin's Creed Easter egg? I don't remember that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's one, mm -hmm. and there's, it's a trophy yeah. as well, like, where you, where you need to reach the highest point of a city. And, and then, then wait. Yeah. And the uh, the synchronization capture will start, and then you get a trophy. Huh. Yeah. I never did that. Well, we're going to do that when we get there, for sure. Yeah, yeah. necessarily. I find out where it is, though, because I don't think I've seen it already. How about you take this one? But... Oh, man, my big bro. Really? He's trusting in me. Oh. Okay. Yeah, sure. Let's just give a child a giant rope for reasons. <laughs> He's teaching him the school of hard knocks or whatever. Necessarily. Right, yes. Okay. While reaching, it is safe to jump. <laughs> okay. Well, now what do we do? Doesn't look safe, though. Yeah, it doesn't look safe at all, <laughs> but... You know, just um, for me. All right, sir. You. There's, a, there's a ladder on the oh, side. Yeah, yeah I have to do this, I think. Oh, you can't. You don't go down the ladder, or do you go down the ladder? Yeah, you should. There you go. He's he's not okay. Now he is. <laughs> all right. Fair enough. Fair enough. I okay. remember there being a few times in all the games, but maybe yeah. worse in this one that they right. the game doesn't. It's occasionally mm -hmm. doesn't do a great job of communicating to you what you're supposed to do, and it's yeah. uh, it not in a good way. Like I don't mind a challenge of like, oh, I've got to solve this puzzle, but it's kind of like a where am I supposed to stand and push the triangle button kind of situation instead. Yeah. That's, a low blow. That's true. I'll have you know that I am a. That's cool motorcycle. Man. It's a nice motorcycle. Look at the lighting though as well. It's it's yeah. great lighting, yeah. and uh, it, this was also I think. <clears throat> It didn't come out a re release too long after the PS4 was released. Mm. So it was like it was. It was a new showcase. gen game. Yeah, like it was trying to showcase what the PS4 could do. Hmm. Um. I got this job. Yeah, and this is not. This is the PlayStation 4 version right. running on a PlayStation 5. So yeah. there's. I don't know what the PS5 version if it's upscaled What's at all or if they've. Ooh, that would be great. Like Naughty Dog is. I mean, they, they only do. Um. 
PlayStation exclusive with their games. Like they, like when I played Last of Us 2, which came out in 2020, like I, the, the 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 visual, um, like fidelity of it is incredible. Like the 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 characters' faces, like even on a normal PS4 and a, and a really old television, it, it looked fantastic, but literally fantastic. Excellent. <clears throat> These are some great okay. games, yeah. Okay, so what I'm, what I'm picking up is that, like, the, the brother is, like, leaving him again. Yeah. Mm. Yes, we're learning a lot about Nate, Nathan's um, uh, daddy issues, <laughs> of which he has mm. many, uh, mm -mm. abandonment issues, right. is what his therapist might call them. I see. <laughs> so, is the fact that he chooses to become a treasure hunter a way to compensate for his daddy issues... Is he trying to assess his own masculinity by I mean, becoming may, a treasure maybe, hunter? Maybe it's some of that. I think I think that they they addressed that in the earlier games in this one too. That he sees his relationship to Francis Drake as being a meaningful one because he feels like a person without a heritage because he's mm. he doesn't because of being an orphan because of his because of um, uh, because of being from Boston. Yeah. People from Boston, <laughs> people from Boston, having been one myself, are dirtbags. That's the way it is. <laughs> joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Unless you're at a. Oh, I think it's. I think it's especially that, like his relationship to to Francis Drake and his like uh, fascination for history and, and treasure and stuff like that. That's what mm -hmm. is on his path, I think. And as we see now, so if we jump a little bit further in time. I mean, a little bit. <laughs> a bit um, <laughs> okay. and he, now he here he is uh, in, in prison as you can see and this is about fi 15 years before this starts the, the events of the of the, the actual game okay in, in prison for looting or for like killing people uh, uh, you'll see but uh, this, is, this is before any of the other games. Oh, okay, okay. Mm. Yeah, this would be before Uncharted 1. Yeah. And this is this is the combat um Yeah, this is tutorial. our tutorial for how to do yeah. first fights, which you have to do every once in a while. Yeah, like, they added this. Like, they, they didn't have it in Uncharted 1, I think. Uncharted 2 did a little bit of it, and Uncharted 3, like, heavily focused on this melee combat, but I have to say I don't like it. In no, it's not, as, it's not as common in this game, I think. No, it, it, it's very clunky as well. Like, I, I, I don't like this melee. It does, it does look a bit clunky. Um, oh, You're basically just second. hammering the square and button a bunch. I mean, that's yeah, kind of but like in Atari 3, you, you could press triangle to, uh, to to dodge or block, but in this game it doesn't let you do that. So they took a step back and then you get, it said you have to roll with, with circle. Uh, but I don't think in this tutorial you can do that. Yeah, it won't even let me do that right now, which is interesting. No. So you just have to take the punches. So I'm really yeah. just basically <coughs> hammering this square button here. That's really all I'm doing. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's almost no thought to this at all. Come on, amigo. So I don't think the game tells us where we are at this point. Uh, but we are in a prison in Panama. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I mean, from the judging from the people speaking Spanish, I kind of assumed we would be oh, yeah. somewhere there. Somewhere, but you know, but yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah, somewhere, somewhere yeah. in the Spanish-speaking world. Yeah. More or less. Mm. We weren't fighting now. We're, we're just, we're just, we're bots. We're cool. We're cool. I mean, props for them actually speaking Spanish, not just... And for using, for throwing some good insults, I have to say. Yeah. Um... It's, uh, you can really start to get the, uh, the cinematic aspirations, the, the way this game is cut much more like a movie than your typical mm -hmm. video game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I mean, there are moments where, um, like, you, you need to, uh, lift... Uh, a gate or something and you'll have to wait until the camera is uh, beyond the gate in order you, that you could drop it or something oh my. I think that's great yeah I like that tra the transition of where he grows he goes from being a kid to being this age mm -hmm. in, a, in a in a like a little a little blur that's very movie like mm -hmm. just the way that they cut the um uh, the cutscenes in, and we're gonna see other words. This is a very movie-like plot right. that's, that's happening too. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Very 
there's a little, there's a, there's a reason he's here. Yeah, there is. There but is are, we gonna, are we gonna learn the reason in the next five minutes? Yes. Yeah. Okay, then I'll wait, and then I'll have to bolt because there's a package at the door, but I, I wanna, I wanna see the reason. Yeah. And then... No, we're gonna find mm. out momentarily. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Infernal Place. Okay, okay. Yeah, the chapter titles are very... They're creative in all the games, and yeah. they often have, like, literary illusions in them and stuff, and I... They're, that's probably true here, too, and I don't know off the top of my head what they're alluding to. But uh, they're... they're uh, it, it'll be in the game if they mention it. They mention it with the, where the chapter titles come from? I mean, where this chapter title comes from. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. they, we're also getting like a very 1600s penmanship. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is the first time they've done that in the games. Uh, the other games, they just use the same font as the, the subtitles. Mm -hmm. okay, this is very, once again, it's very pirate fantasy, right? It's like what you expect for like Pirates of the Caribbean. This is much better than Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> excuse you, excuse you. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah. I will contend the Lego Pirates of the Caribbean is one of the best video games to grace our screens, and if you never played it, that's the only one of the only ones I haven't played. I think it's so record, much yeah. fun, especially in co-op. Anyways, <laughs> I played this demo. Mm -hmm. So we have. Mm, I. What? Okay. Yeah, we're gonna. Uh... Ooh, um, yeah, I. Okay. Yeah, there's definitely some... Yeah, I will. So, I mean, this is a good place to start thinking a little bit critically. I, these games, like so many others, don't do an awesome job. If, they, if they're if they ever showing a place that isn't, you know, America or Europe, it's got... There's there's some exoticism. There's some, um, you know, oh, this is like a, a, you know, to use a loaded term, an uncivilized place or whatever. Um, I went to one place, I think. Um, and that's, that's, I think that's something that the games have gotten criticism for. It's obviously a trope of the genre, right? These sort of treasure yeah, hunter uh, uh, things. I think Tomb Raider does that. I think Indiana hey, you know, Jones does that. Look like the warden's office. Yeah, it's a way of othering like, the, yeah. the other yeah. cultures. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's also... Indiana Jones does that so, so often. Like, the entirety of Indiana Jones 2... Uh, oh, in Temple India, of Doom. It, it oh, my God. horribly, uh, I mean... Yeah. yeah. And it's it's also like the big issue of like depicting the locals, quote unquote. Well, I mean, the locals, not quote unquote, as people who do not care about their cultural heritage. Mm -hmm. And so, you kind of have the the white archaeologists or the white looters in this case, kind of you know, justified yes. in taking what they take because these people almost don't care. And that's something that unfortunately, like you hear for like way more famous art pieces um, uh, in in big white museums in big white nations uh, saying, oh, but if we give them back, like who tells us they're not going to blow them up? And... Oh, yeah, that's part of that bit. You were talking before about the, the museum repatriation. Um, we're, now, we're now learning why we were here. This guy is... Uh, uh, be careful. This is three hundred. They aged him down. Looks like that, like CG de aging they do in the modern movies. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it did. And, uh, yeah, but in that in the museum repatriation, um, you know, debates you hear that a lot, like with the Benin bronzes and things like that, right? Or the or even the Elgin marbles, right? Oh well, we can't. Send it was one hundred percent thinking about those, but like also like Nefertiti's bust, mm -hmm. which is in Berlin, and it's you know. Uh, and it should not be there, or the the Pergamon altar, Did you get to the point? which is also in Berlin for reasons. Um, and it is a problem. I also find it interesting that he finds that his heritage, he's like he's like a New England, you know, man, boy, whatever. But his heritage is actually a white pasty, like privateer from from like England, and not like some, you know, some scruffy dude. So like, yes, it's like it's like when you do twenty three. I mean, it's like, oh yes, my you know my heritage is you know high high class people. It's my ancestors were you know landowners and 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 noblemen and aristocrats and like or maybe they were peasants. Um, like, I understand that for plot purposes, but once again, it's like, it's very colonialist in that way. Por mm. favor. That's true, yeah, and, and now we know the reason why 
he was locked up. It's just he, he, they, they indicate that he let himself be locked up because he needed to access this tower that is right next to the adamant prison. Yes. Mm. So, and he has this got his ancient strength. tower. This uh, yeah, I mean ancient medieval. I think it's uh, supposed to be like later, yeah, yeah, cultural yeah. heritage. It's like it's yeah. supposed to be like 16th century, probably. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I mean, during the age of piracy, because that, that, that this is where Henry Avery, who is, I mean, the entire plot is about this pirate Henry Avery. Mm -hmm. uh, or every, and um, I mean, we started with a quote from him, and, and he, he, I mean, you, you will see uh, everything about him. But <clears throat> so the spy was locked up here, uh, and now we need to um, look uh, in his cell if there's anything there that points to this huge pirate treasure of like four million dollars worth or something. Uh, oh, four hundred million dollars worth. I'm sorry. Oh wow. Um. So, yeah, and this is like the the, the one the, like the big case that he and his brother Sam were always go down the road. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> we're, we're always <laughs> our first uh, our first tre treasure. It was our shiny. Treasure. So in the game, we'll always be finding these treasures that he somehow. I guess sticks in his pocket or somewhere. I don't know. He <laughs> takes them home. It puts um, them somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somewhere. He has to <laughs> smuggle them out of the country somewhere. Um, but he, yeah. I'm. Uh, I'm this I'm is getting... something huge that we can talk about, like with the the cultural heritage, the looting. Like he's literally like this is. I mean, this is our first loot of the of the street. Yeah, this yeah. is like a pre-Columbian. I'm getting pre-Columbian, you know, vibes. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just on the ground. No one cares about it. And it's just pickpocketing. It's like, yeah, I'll, I'll just, you know, I'll just, I'll just snatch it. To be fair, finding something out of context, there's no way you can record it. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't give you any information about the context, uh, the date and everything else. But that doesn't mean that it's okay to take it. Yeah, right? Yeah. And, and it, it, they do an interesting thing or they give you these beautiful like renders where you can go in and look at the object you can turn it yep. around but they give you no information about it which right. is which is an interesting oh. choice because i feel like other games would give you a little description and contextualize it oh this is the this is an example of a panamanian yeah, such and such from such and such time period like you'd get a little bit of information about it and this it's just the disembodied contextualist object and that's quite thematic <laughs> is what i'll say i mean Oh. There's one oh, I was instance I think, in, in the games where they. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Well, yeah. this is also He's quite thematic. <laughs> uh, so that there's one instance I think in all of the games where they actually do uh, give some information, and that is the flashback scene in Uncharted Three. Is that's where, um, uh, that, so you're uh, going through a museum looking for this artifact of Francis Drake. Um, and there, uh, you can look at all of the uh, exhibits, and you, you, you can zoom in on them, and they give you like a, a short, I mean, one sentence description of what you're actually looking at, um, which it's, it's better than nothing. But right, it, I mean, if you look at the discovery tour for the Assassin's Creed games, they they have paragraphs of like this one object or something. Exactly. Uh, so sometimes yeah. not completely correct, but at least thing. they have them. So what yeah. um, but yeah, this this is another like another of the instances of of othering, right? Because you have a lot of information about Francis Drake and this other pirate and like all these um, colonial, well, let's say colonial, but you know you know what I mean, like European built stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But the indigenous things are not even described; they're just pieces of gold that you yeah. just pocket mm -hmm. and take them. So what the heck am I supposed to do here? I've, I missed the uh, problem, I think, actually. Yeah. Aren't you supposed to throw in, a rope? In the work, underneath the workbench, there's a rope, I think. Oh. I think, I, think I remember that. It's a deck down here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. you can swing across. Okay. Yeah. Now we're in business. All right. Okay, that works. Yeah, yeah. That works. I should have. I should have. No, we were in that. business. I mean, yes. <laughs> I, can, I can see that. I can see the business. <laughs> And the business is cultural heritage looting. <laughs> Here we go. Wee. So these little puzzles. I mean, I mean, say you're Indiana Jones without actually. Yeah, saying without actually Indiana telling Jones. me. Indiana Jones, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Also, tell me that you don't care about structural stability without telling me that you don't care about structural stability. Yeah, let's go into a ruin. Yeah. It seems like you're, someone says it seems like you're risking your life for very little gain here. Uh, true. 
Uh, but at the same time, it, it's uh, he's, it's this case that he's been sur I mean researching this in his entire life. So I guess the emotional aspect of it, like him <laughs> doing this with his brother, uh, that that's more important. I mean, I mean, v more important than the four hundred million. Dollars. <laughs> I, uh, I, I would say that, but it, 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 it's supposed to be like the biggest pirate treasure um, that there that that's never been found, which I think is literally a line from the Uncharted movie from another pirate. So, I, I yeah. it's it's always the the greatest pirate treasure that yeah. has ever been. I do wonder if like in real life we've ever found like giant pirate treasures and not just you know um, sunken ships with stuff. There are examples of, yeah, of, of um, you know, finding ships that have treasures, whatever that means, whether that means they're full of gold or they're full of just, like, incredibly preserved, amazing artifacts that maybe wouldn't have been thought of as treasures in the 16th century or 17th century, but are now. Um, all right, let's see, what do I do now? Uh, da, da. This is, I mean, this is, like, the this is a lot of the puzzles in these games. They're actually these traversal segments. They kind of work them into the... Yeah. So that's where I came from. I think you need to climb... Oh, I need to climb the, the, the tower. Climb this thing. Oh, I see it there. I see, the, I see that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, do I do it from out here, maybe? Let's see, yeah. All right, let's see. How do I do this without fall, falling to my death? Okay. I get a Joel Center tool that keeps saying, great, I'm for it. Listen that's now. So, I mean, I'm for it, typology? That movie. <laughs> it's, it's it's interesting. I wouldn't watch that movie, but I know plenty of people who would. <laughs> Gotta find the highest cell. Pot friends, potheads, quite literally. <laughs> they would. <Hey>, pothead. <laughs> <laughs> and the first time, oh my god, everything. See, structural integrity. It's important. Yeah, yeah you. I was um, just gonna say you mentioned that the structural integrity thing before. Okay, uh, the, I mean it's a trope of these games that. Uh, the last mm -hmm. ledge you have to grab onto will always break and crumble. And necessarily, fall. necessarily, yeah. it's, it's for... like it's the one thing. Um, also, I think it would be really cool, like if if we find like um, uh, like speaking of okay, let me rephrase it. Speaking of like finding treasures and stashes, like sometimes you find actual what we could call treasures that are like um someone's pocket change that they just put in in a vase. And like put it underground or like hid hid it for like oh you know I'll come back to this and then they never came back and those are actually like excellent like time capsules, um, and that is true for like all air like all time right you you find those like in in ancient Rome and you found those in like in sixteen hundreds and you you find like these hordes of coins that someone put a put away but not because they were like creating a map with X marks a spot but just because they're like oh I'm gonna you know stash it away and then come back then. For whatever reason, they never came back, and and came back, and those would should not be looted. They should be excavated <laughs> in context, maybe, um, and or studied. It's funny that you give that example. We had a couple of <laughs> chapters in this game. So I am this, really this is, not surprised. This is our first our first <laughs> example of one of my big my biggest pet peeves in these games, which is mm -hmm. a piece of paper sitting on a table for four hundred years, <laughs> three hundred years, and it's like just yeah. fine, and you can just read it. Like, like, yeah. the, the video that I made about preservation and taphonomy and uh, and. Uh, um, uh, Uncharted goes on about this for some time. How irritating! Tell us, how, tell us how you really feel. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I don't. Which is also like, oh yeah, sorry. Should we, should we read these or just like I don't know, you know people? I mean, they're stuff. they're backstory, but these are like you, you find the same things in The Last of Us. Like you, uh, it's, so in The Last of Us, like you have these zombie outbreak and everybody has to move and you find these documents, like artifacts of what the world was like. And so based on these, um short text that you find <laughs> or documents the world gets fleshed out a little bit more um and, and and i think i i like the idea of them but the way they incorporated could have been better so i went down here i actually didn't need to come down here but i went down here specifically so we could try and find uh yeah some of another these, shiny another some yeah. of the, the okay these. that's a knife that's good 
So yeah, we the... can't see it because our webcams are blocking, but they do get a name in, in the menu, don't Oh, they? yeah, it's Navaja Folding Knife is what this one is. Mm-hmm. And this one here is called a Panamanian Cat Pendant is what it says. So oh, yeah. one thing they do do that's kind of interesting, and I think this is kind of cool and archaeological with these these th- these treasures, is you get a quite a, usually a broad span of time with these objects. So a lot of times you'll get things that are... Um, prehistoric to use you know for lack of a better term and then you'll also find things that are maybe from the 17th century and then you might find stuff that's from the 19th century uh you don't just get stuff that's from like one period and it speaks to yep. this world being a little bit like a palimpsest right like all these places are archaeological sites they've got these different layers portrayed uh, and we can you see you may want well. to explain what a palimpsest oh, is <laughs> a palimpsest palimpsest is my favorite word uh, I love palimpsests. I love, I, me too. Yeah, and it's, but it, archaeologists it's, love it's, it's, it. it. Archaeologists <laughs> love it because it's, it, it basically means like a series of patterns that are superimposed over each other in a way that makes them quite difficult to disentangle. And that's frankly what most archaeological sites are like. Um, I don't know. Is, is that a decent explanation? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and in, specifically in the history of like books and written production of everything else, a palimpsest is a let's say, a page or a document um, that has been written over Mm -hmm. something else. And so sometimes, for example, when you have manuscripts uh, on, uh, what's it called, parchment, um, you can still see the thing that has been scraped away and, like, written over. Um, And sometimes you find actual, like, texts that are, like, way more ancient than the one that you're looking at under the text. Um, that was like, and that's like one of the coolest things I ever learned when I was studying uh, medieval medieval manuscript. It was like, it was like yeah, it, it's my fun. mind was blown. But it's an apt metaphor for how archaeology works. Like we're just trying to see what's underneath so and underneath and underneath. And sometimes you can't, you can't fucking read, yeah, you can't read anything. <laughs> um, so. It's funny. It reminds me when I was a teacher and my students would write yeah. stuff like on the page that oh. they would. Uh, remove it with like Tipex so that like this this white thing that they put over it and they think oh he will never be able to read it but if you hold the paper and go like this <laughs> you, can left, you can read everything they write <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Also, uh, let's talk about ancient paper, um, Dr. Farley, and why paper does not survive, especially next to the sea, with what I suppose is very acidic soil in extreme humidity yeah. setting. I mean, these games absolutely, again, that video that I have is like almost entirely about this. These games just ignore the whole notion of preservation. So, right, every object in the world, we're just going to look at this paper for a minute while we talk about this. Uh, every object <laughs> in the world is has a, has, has, what we might call preservational qualities, right? Some objects, if you stick them in the ground and you wait 10,000 years, they will look totally unchanged. Usually things that are made of stone, right? Uh, That's why this is one of the main reasons why stone tools are such an important part of archaeological analysis. Uh, And then some things don't preserve well at all in most circumstances, like anything that's made of organic material. The reason being that organic material is like, delicious right so as soon as you put uh you put organic material in the soil it uh it's going to be start to get destroyed by acid by acids or by rodents or insects or whatever and so they they usually will not last um and so we get differential preservation an archaeological site in the end all the ar- artifacts that we excavate from it will um uh, they're not a, they're not an accurate portrayal of what actually existed there in the period and of the time that we're looking at so you know during the five thousand years that have passed and since your archaeological site was was you know abandoned to use the industry term left in place um all those preservational qualities uh are are fighting against all of those artifacts and some will survive and some won't so we have to account for this using statistics, objective analysis, subjective analysis, in our interpretation of archaeological sites to try and interpret what do these objects mean, knowing that we're missing a huge portion of the archaeological record. Paper <laughs> does not preserve <laughs> hardly ever, except in, except in a, what we might call exceptional preservational circumstances. So a site that's really, really dry or really, really cold, or really wet, actually, waterlogged sites can, can lead to exceptional preservation, or burnt sites, things that are charred can sometimes be preserved. Um, so those See, are, Pompeii, yeah, exactly, for instance, yeah. all the papyri. 
Yeah, Pompeii is a great example. Or, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. We, there's there's lots of different examples from around the world. Or like you were talking about ship. Sometimes shipwreck sites have incredible preservation because that water logging will actually help preserve them, especially if they're if they are in cold waters or deep, deeply, mm-hmm. deeply um, submerged. Uh, and so sometimes you can get. Oh, think about the Titanic as a great example, right? They went down mm-hmm. to the, when they when they first looked at the Titanic, like you know, people's bodies were just like perfectly preserved down there in kind of creepy ways. Um, well, you know, sad. Part sad, of the job. Yeah, sad, sad, disturbing ways. But that's an exceptional preservational circumstance. So, yeah, we're supposed to be solving this puzzle. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. so it's uh, in, Roman, in... Roman numerals and um, yeah. Zodiac. <laughs> so we've got this... Indiana Jones? So we are, a, no, in, I was uh, about to say the Zodiac Killer, but yes, yeah, so Indiana Jones. <laughs> I went we are dark. In, in, in Henry Avery's cell now, and we're supposed to have solved this puzzle. Mm. Um, so it's uh, Sagittarius and Scorpio. Not a great astrological combination, if you ask me. <laughs> um, but, you know, this is now Astrological Hour. It is a new moon in Virgo tonight. It's time for cleansing. <laughs> So there's wow. so that's 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 the Roman numeral ten, right? For our first, I don't know anything about the yes, Zodiac, it is so. ten. And then we've yeah. got this M looking guy. Which one's that? <laughs> but that's not. But that's not it. Scorpio's not. No, that's like that looks like the hieroglyph for new. It's um no to your right on the other wall. This one on the the wall the other wall the other one the other one. It's the not one three. It's two. Yes. So we have 10 and 2. 10 and 2. Okay, so let's find mm-hmm. 10. Yes. This is fun. Yes. We can solve the puzzles together. It'll be fun. All right, yes, so there's, exactly. a, there's a 10. Oh, right? yes, the, the new moon right after oh. Purim. That's true. That's true. I know exactly where we have to look, but I'm not going to say it. Sir. Roman numeral 10. It, it's actually, it's really That's one. Easy, 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 <laughs> 10 and easy. 2. <laughs> is it 12? Is that what we need? Again. Is it really, driving really instructions? Easy. What did the letter say again? We have to look at the letter again. Let's see. Those are not letters. Those are numbers. Uh, anyways. <laughs> so, no, no. He said. He said. Okay. What did the What does the letter What does the letter say again? I think he was referring to this to the to the whole the document. Oh, again. okay, okay. Uh, I got I got angry. Unnecessarily angry. <laughs> Sorry, Latin teacher here. Like those are numbers. No, 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 no. Yeah. What? Uh... Now that Drake, you were raised by nuns, and you yeah. don't know your Latin. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't been paying close enough attention. Oh, that says the Scorpio sign. It's side. 10 and 2. It's 10 and 2. I told you. Well, then I just did yeah. 10 and nothing, and it, it said that was wrong. Right? Okay. Oh, so yeah. he knows the Roman numeral 2. Okay. Oh, okay, there's see? 2. All right, there's 2, right? Let's see what this does. Roman numeral 2. Okay, yeah, that is 2. Okay. Roman numeral 2. Did I miss That's it. He's trying to forget his non days. <laughs> <laughs> Did I miss something on the letter? M- Mabes? I don't know. Let's see. No. Sagittarius, here, here. Roman numeral 10. 10 and 2. Is it? Uh, is there a 12 somewhere? <laughs> no. No, you guys aren't going to help me? <laughs> <laughs> Never played this game. I don't know what we're doing. 10 and 2 equals? Yeah, 12, right? 12? So look for oh, a 12. Oh, there's a 12 right there. Look oh, at is that. there a 12? Okay. Yeah, I there's even... actually, there's a compass That's literally <laughs> pointing towards Oh, oh no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go away. I have, this is, this is, you, th- some of the puzzles are like a little bit tricky and I think it's going to be a challenge. That's not how additions work. <laughs> Again, not... here's another great example. This is like. Oh, like... that's also where you put your hands on the ship's wheel. Oh Jesus! Oh, literally Jesus. Okay. Oh, that's oh, that's that's it's clever. Ten and two, where you put your hands on the ship's wheel. You think that's intentional? Hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, that might. And it's not Jesus, by the way. What do you mean it's not Jesus? Look at he's, look at how he's tied up. Yeah, he's tied on instead. Of... Oh, it's one of the it's yeah. one of the thieves. Okay, nice, nice. Mm-hmm. The yeah, one on his he's... right or the one on his left? The one on his right, I'm assuming, he's because it's the... a digna. It's the good thief, right? The the repentant, It's the good thief, right? The digna factis or Okay, okay, okay. Oh, there's nothing else in there. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was in the first Alia Yakta. That is excellent. Yeah, I, I, that, was, that was a great event. Yeah, I, I would not want to put my bare hands inside of walls. 
Oh yeah. Wait For fear of crawling that. creatures? Oh yeah, that's that just me. I think it'd be fun if like a huge spider came out afterwards. Oh my god. Ooh, yeah. Like, yeah. like a Sheila type of spider or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Whoa! Okay. Held L1 and use down this to repel down, okay? Okay. Huh. Look at us learning the commands. Yeah. And now Oops. what, well? Whee! Oh. Yeah, it's just teaches. Yeah, these the rope the rope stuff oh is God. new, so they they have a lot of fun using that. Yeah, as an oh God, but it know. gets quite. I mean, it it, it it gets very thrilling and at a certain point, right, where you're just like you're shooting while you're like swinging in the rope, and I think there's even a trophy where that says like get twenty headshots or something uh, while Ooh. swinging on the rope. But that's that's very difficult. I think. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I, I have zero at this point because getting a headshot in this game. It's it's fairly easy, but from a rope. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think platinuming this game would probably be kind of like annoying. <laughs> yeah. There's this one trophy. What was it called? Uh, that I think is so difficult. I don't remember. But there was one. Oh yeah, it's get your accuracy. Uh, keep your accuracy uh, uh, above seventy percent or something. Ooh. But how seventy percent? I, get, I, I mean, get... I don't even get that in, in the early games, and this game is harder in that respect. I mean, so, so I guess you just put the game on, on like, the easiest yeah, mode. Yeah, just... I think you put it on an easy, easier mode, and then, yeah. like, just very yeah, okay. carefully. Um, you know, I'm going shots. I'm going to get downstairs to get a, a package of perishable food. Uh, oh, yeah. I'll be back in five minutes. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> we were, like, ah, numerals and things, and my food is done there. Oh, okay. no. <laughs> don't let the food go to waste. All right, it's just us. Yeah. All right. Uh, but look, I mean, but we've, we've turned down the graphical quality for this game uh, quite drastically for this stream. Yes. But it still looks great, I think. Yeah, it's a yeah. We really because my computer sucks for anybody who's watching. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we yeah we had to put down the resolution to uh, something kind of comically low, and it was like it still yeah looks, like still... four hundred pixel or something. Yeah, and it still it still looks <laughs> yeah. really good. It didn't really look that but different. I mean, compared to the early three games, like this is just wow. I, I, when I first played it, I also had played on the PS5 now, and that's just amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, I should have known. I mean, this is on the PS5, but I don't think this is the. Yeah, this is the. Right. I'm just playing the PS4. It's a PS4, version, yeah. You which, can up upgrade it for free. I mean, not for free because you have to pay for the the Lost Legacy DLC. Yeah, so I, I mean, I, I wonder if I do that. Will will it save my will it save my save files probably so that we could just continue? Um, that's a good interesting it, question. It, it, it depends. You have to save them to the cloud because that's what I did with my Valhalla uh, save files. So I now I, I've upgraded it to the PS5, but I was able to. Uh, be keep my file. save file from the PS4. Mm. I'm gonna try that. Yeah, I have a, I have cloud saves and stuff, so I might be able to do that. Oh, yeah. Play with it. I mean, not that this doesn't look really good. It does, but I wonder. I'm just curious to see what it looks like on the PS5 version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, me too. And for ten buckaroos. Mm -hmm. True. So now he's got this cross, and he has to go back to jail. Um, to talk to talk to his brother because he's the Avery expert. Yeah, we're gonna find out that uh, we're gonna find out that uh, his brother is actually here in prison with him. Mm -hmm. This was all a complicated ruse. He's uh, on a work trip. Oh yeah, I totally forgot like all of this happens before the whole. Yeah, so like they they. Build this character. <laughs> this is years before in Tardot One. Um, so they, they go back in time and they, they kind of fill that space. They because I think that's what video games do nowadays. Like if you look at God of War, it's the same. Like um, the, the early games, they're just these hyperkinetic pieces of action. Uh, it's always like they, they, you don't get to know the character that much. It just uh, being in God of War, you just see Kratos swinging around, making destruction everywhere same with nathan drake but then nowadays we we we're 
looking at more. I mean, we, we, we sort of need these characters to be more human, and we want them to be like actual characters. We want to know about Drake's backstory. We want to know about uh, Kratos having a kid, for example, in in the new game. Like we 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 want. I mean, we are building these characters uh, more deeply. Like we're really fleshing them out, and I think that's what games are really doing better. Yeah, uh, the last couple of, 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 of years. And it's interesting. I see people. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. Oh, ahead. I was just gonna say it was interesting, especially with these older, older um, series like mm -hmm. Uncharted and and uh, God of War, which have been around for literally decades now in some cases. Yeah. Uh, grappling with that, and these were such like, you know, grumpy male power fantasy games, and that's not to say mm -hmm. that they're not still that in a lot of ways, but they're yeah. kind of trying to not be that, and that's um, mm -hmm. it's interesting to see the medium yeah, grow in that way. Okay. Um, so, yeah, what do we yeah. Do? like we, we we start to care for these characters more now. They're, they're not just our avatars in the game. Like they're actually they're fully established characters um, that we're supposed to see as partners uh, while we uh, play uh, through the game. I think. And I see people talking about Disney Star Wars. Um, well. That, that, that's not get me started on the sequel trilogy and how they handle character but uh, yeah I mean um, some of the Disney plus stuff they do the same thing like Boba Fett like they, they hash him out they get turn him into a more established character I think mm -hmm. uh, but yeah I know you have opinions Lord <laughs> about Disney Star Wars are they taught? Are there, is there is there Star Wars discourse in the chat? I can't actually see. That. There is Star Wars discourse. Star Wars discourse in the chat. That's <laughs> that's when you've made it as a stream, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so we're examining the this, 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 the third guy, this Rafe, uh, who is yeah, looking at us. Uh, I mean, working with us, and we we examine and we see it's not Jesus, it's Saint Dismas. Uh, and now we're gonna. Get to know how uh, who Saint Dismas was. But so apparently the cross is a uh, hollow inside, and we need to find something in, but we we, we can't. Yeah, there's almost like so now a question we're about who Saint Dismas was. There, there's a there's a with these this these uncharted games are very much like an Indiana Jones story or like a, a, um, a James Bond movie or something. They have these two levels of the plot and the one level of the plot is the big macro okay this is about nathan and his brother and they're trying to find a buried you know a, a sunken ship that's full of gold and you can have a good old time just thinking about the story that way and then there's like the micro plot which is these all these ridiculous twists and turns and MacGuffins, and uh uh you know and this game does that there's tons of that right oh we're looking for the cross oh now we got to find the thing inside the cross Oh, the cross tells us uh, about this thing in Scotland. So we're going to go to Scotland and try and find the thing. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's just, uh, I think that's how it goes, right? Oh, I'm in a fist fight. Oh, God. Nice. <laughs> nice. By the way, as Jim Canis, uh, I, you're right. The first game uh, does, uh, the first God of War game does really uh, go in-depth into his backstory. Uh, but still, it, it's, it's this... Pretty much isolated to this one sequence, I would say. Like, and, and, but I love what they do with it. It's very like ancient tragedy, like. But it, it, it's, I mean, I think recent <laughs> games they, they they extend that to like more of the the whole of the game. I would say. But you you you're, you're correct in pointing out that uh, old school Kratos was they did get that large back. I mean that that backstory as well. That's true. Yeah, in some ways, Kratos is the original video game sad dad, right? Yeah. Um, but boy, <laughs> but now he's like, now he's like super. Now he's like two times sad dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that new God of War game's good. Yeah. It's, it's not that new anymore, huh? It's been out for a couple of years. I think yeah, the sequel's coming out this year. God mm -hmm. of War Ragnarok. 2018. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, I always feel like these 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 fist fight sequences go on just about two minutes too long. Yeah, I, th yeah. I, I they're not like that good. I mean, it's uncharted. Give us the guns, I would say. But this one is. Give us a crowbar. I keep. Uh, yeah. I keep. I keep pushing the. Uh, Sorry, I'm a rogue. I keep. I keep. I keep pushing the uh, the the left joystick to lock on, and I'm like, oh, this, Elden, yeah, Elden no. Ring. This game is not. Let me just tell you. <laughs> That's, yeah, that's not how it works. Yeah, Ouch. 
Ouch. Also, all these these guys um wearing a, a particular outfit. I see. I see. Yeah. <laughs> ah! Oh, that hurt. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, I have to keep remembering you guys are seeing this all a couple of seconds behind me. There's a slight... Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> it's fun to hear you guys react to something that happened like five seconds ago. You're in the future. <laughs> yeah, I see, I see people... I, I see police brutality. Um, although it's not police, but, you know, paramilitary... Yeah. Whatever, with batons. Yeah, I wish I could say that this game uh, was really engaging with issues like that a little bit more thoughtfully. Yeah, mm. yeah sure. it's still like this. It's, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know. Action movie thing. Yeah, it's basically, this is all... It's it's tropey, right? I'm sure this is a scene that's yeah. probably played out exactly like this in some, some action movie. Um, and that's okay. These games are they're yeah. meant to be... They were they were on the yeah. way. Video games growing as an art form. We were talking about that a little bit, Kate, while you were gone. Like this, what, what is the Uncharted game series? What role does it play in that history of games as an art form? And I do think it played an important step yeah. in that, which is that there was a period when games were, you know, kind of always a little bit. Dumb, not not always. There's tons of exceptions, right? But big AAA games had a certain kind of vibe about them, and I think the first Uncharted game, and they were like, well, "What if games were basically movies? You know, <laughs> what if, what if what if we just made a movie that you could push buttons in?" Uh, and uh, and then I think in many ways video games have now transcended that too. So it's interesting to see an Uncharted, which is now a kind of legacy series, in that you know, playing around with with that notion. I don't know if I'm making any sense, but these are my my part-time job is no. a video game critic, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I fully agree. I think Naughty Dog in general has especially shown how video games can be more like movies. And that's why it bugged me that the Uncharted movie, which could have had the potential of bringing their cinematic potential full circle, did only with it what they did with it. Yeah. Um, but... I mean, uh, look at these. The, the, I mean, the, the world design as well in these games. Like uh, uh, this one is still. I mean, I would say Last of Us and especially Last of Us Part Two does this way better, uh, even still. But the the, the the world is so full of details. Like you can. I mean, even here, like like the the, the way the, uh, the 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 core is set up, the furniture. Like there's. Um, Empty mugs everywhere. I mean, there's just so much detail in it. It feels like it's a, this real kind of world, and I think Naughty Dog does that especially well. And that's why they have the reputation that they have uh, as, as game designers. So we've now just re learned that Raf is a uh, Rafe is a uh, not, not a very nice guy. No, he was called a third world thug. It's, uh, we, we, we could probably tell within about two. Is there anything in here? I'm gonna do uh, this because no, this, think... this is usually how you find the little treasure things. Yeah, you, 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 you go the yeah, wrong true. way. The shinies. Yeah, I don't think in this section there's anything. Oh, that counts as a game over. <laughs> mm. God, I realize that. Okay, well, G game over. Oh, wow. Well. Game yeah, over. It's, it's a time thing. Yeah, in a very <laughs> nice way, game overs in this are, are are they're very friendly. Usually, you only get thrown back yeah. a minute or two at the most, and you just can just oh, yeah. you can just keep trying until you get it right. Someone says in the chat, the downside of we wanted to make a movie, but it's like we made a game, is how often it's in tension with player, player agency. Uh, when the creators are more interested in the story, they want to tell them in making a game. And that is true. Uh, that's what, what what I also dislike about like the quick time events in this game. Like, uh, you're, I mean, they could, they could flesh out the, the abilities Pit and Drake more than, than they uh, just, I mean, just have you button, button mashing. Uh, something, and I think that's also the main problem with turning video games into, into movies is that when we ex think about our experiences with Uncharted, with Tomb Raider, with Sonic the Hedgehog, we, um, we, we 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 remember what we did in the story, like uh, or what what the feeling was of playing the game. And then we see that story on the screen, and we we are stripped of our control. And I think that's something that video game movies will always. Um, I have, to, I have to find a way of, of, of circumventing that problem because that, 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 that's something that will plague them. Um, I think in every kind of movie that they do. I was having a conversation. Apart, oh yeah, sorry. Go I was ahead. just gonna say I was having a conversation with my partner earlier today about ludo narrative dissonance and like the advantages that games have in 
uh, and I, what the you know the person in the chat was sort of talking about was games have this unique this unique addition, which is um, gameplay, right? As a as an element of a, a way to express art, uh, express yourself artistically. We were having this in the in the wake of the discourse of you know the should Dark Souls have an easy mode kind of a kind of a discourse, right? Um, and the the artistic intent versus uh, accessibility and right like that. That's such an interesting um, element of uh, games. <laughs> that uh, oh, another freaking fist fighting second. Oh my god. Yeah, I don't like these. It's too but many. I like of the these. thing you 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 say about like uh, the agency is like addition to uh, video games as apart from from movies, and I think there's this um, this early video game studies book. Um, Hamlet on the Holodeck by Janet Murray, and she she talks about how video games are initially started as like an additive medium, so that they they took things from a certain medium and they added to it, much like for example photo plays did or movies did. Like they, the early movies like the Tableau uh, movies, they they just uh, they were like they're basically theater shows, theater plays, and then they filmed them and edited them. Uh, and then eventually, uh, these movies and games as well, they turn it from an additive medium to a more expressive medium, where you're not thinking about them like, oh, this is a movie and we have this and this and this. No, we, we think about them from a intrinsic video game logic. Um, like, we're not necessarily... Uh, we're not required to compare them to movies at, uh, all the time. We, we can just think about them as their own video game expression. Um, which I think is a really interesting way to think about like media and, 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 and the evolution or development of media. Yeah, and it's such a, it's an exciting thing to see video games going through that because yeah, it's such a, it is still such a young medium. And what does it mean? What 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 what? Yeah, like the Uncharted series is such an important element of that part of the. What did you call it? that? Was such a cool term, right? Additive, right? It was just yeah. Let's I mean, make it's not my let, term, but let, yeah. Let's <laughs> yeah. let's make let's make a let's make a movie. Let's make a video game that's yeah. as good as a movie, right? As a versus mm -hmm. um, uh, other games that are you know definitely more in the realm of what can games do that movies can't do? What can games movies do that, can't, right? Yeah, yeah, that books can't do. There's unique things we can do in this medium. And that's exciting. That's really exciting. Yeah. It's like, also early video games, they were very often like demonstrations of what technology could do. Um, like, uh, it, one, like, just like one part of early films was the excitement of, oh look, the images are moving, like what, what they did in, in, in photos. The, the one one of the early attractions of games was oh look what I am doing like I am pushing these buttons and this is happening this is so much fun and I think this is what we all felt like when we first played a video game like oh look what I am doing this, this is me but then more and more we're not thinking of games as technological demonstrations we're thinking about them as like these wholesale ludic experiences that we're uh, playing with and I think that they're becoming more expressions in their own right um, <clears throat> <clears throat> not not to talk about dead. Dark Souls in a video that's not about one. Dark Souls, but I was just thinking of that conversation. Please welcome to talk we were, about Dark yeah, Souls. Yeah, we were having that conversation. It, it really we could think about it with Elden Ring and like that it was it you know the Ludo narrative. We're just watching one of the most emotional parts of the game and just not talking about yeah, it. Yeah, uh, the, so uh, the, <laughs> the, the but there you know those games are you know there's a lot of debate about the difficulty in those games and why do they have to be so difficult and. You know, that is a part of the Ludo narrative of those games. The gameplay being difficult, it matches the themes of the game uh, about struggle and about whatever, depression or something, uh, whatever you want to read. Um, and, uh, and so that, that's why it's such a difficult question of how do you make a game like that accessible without losing that Ludo narrative um, harmony that comes from that. All that time, we're just, this is the title screen, finally. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fine. Yeah, we made it. Fantastic. Isn't Excellent. It's also, what I really like about this title screen is that it's it it, it is a summary of the three games that came before it. I really oh. really love this. Like, I want to respond to the comment in the chat because I really like <laughs> this. We'll, this we'll this it, yeah, uh, title yeah. screen is amazing. Like, this is the, like literally one of the first season in Charted One. Like the plane crashing down on the island, and then you find the Nazi U-boat uh, <laughs> that you see here, and then you meet Elena. 
I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this uh, in, in, in lag, but still, like in this El Dorado, Mayan... that, the, the, oh the my first God, game is about El Dorado, but it, they, they have a twist on it, it's not, it's not a city, it's a statue, I think, because El Dorado would mean the Golden it's Man or the something. the Golden One? Yeah. And then here we're in Tarda 2 with the train uh, sequence that was so... Um, uh, iconic. Iconic, yeah. yeah. And then uh, the hang train hanging over the side. The Tibetan town, which was a very uh, famous. Yeah. Scene. The first, the first walk and talk, the first prestige walk and talk. Probably we were in first. Shambhala. That's that, that was what we were looking for in the in Tarda two. Yeah. And it turns out to be this blue thing. And then, of course, the most iconic scene in all of in, in Tarda is like the plane scene from Uncharted 3, uh, which was already in the movie as well. And the movie does something with that very similarly to how this game started. Um, in many ways, Uncharted 4, if, Uncharted 4 is very much, I think, a celebration of the series. It was seen as the, yeah. oh, this is going to be the It's the, the curtain call. Yeah, this is the yeah. end of Nathan's story. We're going to celebrate the series, and this, this opening mm -hmm. speaks to that, yeah. Yeah, we are also running around like the hour 30 of stream. Uh, one and a half hour, and we're around 4 p.m. here. Uh, Alex, how late is it where you are? Oh, it's fine. It's uh, 10 to 9 here. So. Okay. I mean, uh, we can... I, I just want to... Oh, wait. Uh, this first, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. This first. I, I was wondering, like, if we can go on for, like, I don't know, another, I don't know, 10 minutes, and then, like, find a stopping point. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then... But and this the, next time we will be on time because we've we figured out the tech stuff. <laughs> I do I do love the conversation, uh, but I also don't want you know to go far for too you know for too long, um, just to keep it in the in the you know uh, before four p.m. unless we have you know big big narrative reasons to to go forward. Um, no, so here we are in the present day. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, we see Drake's new job because he's given up his life as a treasure hunter. Uh, which, again, is like an evolution of his character, which is something that the previous Uncharted games would not have done. And, mm -hmm. um, but so there was this comment in the chat, like, that there's an overly fictive nature of player interaction with mechanics on screen, press X button, which is something we would excuse within the generic space of the game world, but which we, which would be of putting transposed to another genre, which, yeah, I, 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 that, that's very much true. Like the 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 aspect Tiny. of button mashing is is something that in this game is used to make it more cinematic. I think like uh, we we have to do the same thing that we always do, but Drake does other things. Um, so he 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 is more. I mean, he's not constrained to any one action, whereas the player is. Uh, mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Right, but, but it's yeah, true, like we, the yeah. yeah. No, no, go, go. No, no, I was no, <laughs> I was finished. <laughs> no, I was, I was looking at the shines and things. Also, like yes, the the immersion experience is inherently far different. Well, yes, you have the, you have agency up to a certain point, and then not too much, mm -hmm. um, which is also probably, I think, the big, um, uh, the big attractive of um, RPG games, right? When you can kind of make your own story and your own person, and like make it a role play even if the story might be fixed, which is like, you can, we're, we're going like beyond video games here, but like with every video game, you can go as meta as you want and as role playing as you want. Like I follow streamers who do RPG with FIFA in which oh, yeah. you are basically creating backstories for like every player and you know, everything that happens and everything else. It's like, it is the, like the newer version of writing from fiction, but instead of writing it on paper, you are trying to adapt it to what you see and the other way around. So you're trying to make sense of what you see in in other ways, um, which is a good, or not, right? Like if you just want to take games at face value and just not role play and just do, you know, what the game tells you to do, you can also do that. There's great freedom in that, mm -hmm. which I think is, is very, is very cool. Um, also, yes, from the chat, Dark Souls fits the model in a very different way. You have tons of control over your character movement, equipment, level of engagement with the story, something which is much more linear in Uncharted. Yes, yep. yes. Um, yeah. And sometimes it's good to play like one game first and then the other, right? Sometimes I just want a very linear game in which I don't have to think. I just mm -hmm. need to press, but press buttons and do things. And some other times I want to be 
emotionally involved and like look at things in every detail like when the first Baldur's Gate came out I was overjoyed because like finally I can make a character that kind of looks like what I would like to look like I don't really but you know it's an avatar uh, and in other games, I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll play like as a as a you know a white man, I, straight white man. I don't care. It's just you know it's very linear. But it's like there's a it's a spectrum, right? It's so so much larger than it, and it's so much larger now than it was right. when I started playing games, which was the nineties. Uh, so, I've been playing you know. since the eighties. I got you beat. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. I was, I was. Born in the eighties, so. <laughs> well, me too, but I, I mean, let's be honest. I, I, I didn't play a lot in the eighties. I was only four when the eighties ended. So. Mm. I feel so young. <laughs> you are the you're, the you're the baby, right? Yeah. Yeah. You are. You I, are. I the baby, like uh, I, I played some games, like when I was actually like, like a kid in like the early two thousands. I was born in uh, ninety six, so. But I, I, but my first actual console that I owned was a PS3, which I bought for Skyrim, which was, oh, and it was 2011. Your first console so, was a PS3. Yeah. It hurts yeah. right here in my yeah, bypass. <laughs> my, my I first, feel like I make up for it now that I do my PhD on games. So. My, 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 my first console was a Commodore 64. Oh, wow. <laughs> my first one was, was a PC, we no a, consoles. Yeah, we had a Commodore. I did buy an NES a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, we had a Commodore 64 yeah. and we had an Atari 2600. Mm -hmm. And then Ooh. later, later on, later on, we had a, we did have an, an NES and, right. and on and on from there. Uh, Fair. Okay. Um, also, from the chat, specific speaking specifically of the controls, I've always liked the way old Assassin's Creed controls, mm -hmm. um, the puppet system where each key has a specific function and learning the right combination to make specific action, always felt way more immersive yeah. than just press X to act. Oh, I forget what I'm sure. saying. I, 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 I felt I feel the. In Assassin's Creed, like the modern day, I mean the the, the more recent games, the newer, yeah, they, yeah, they are less restrictive uh, in their controls. That so you can basically do anything. I, 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 like also, when you do parkour, you can just climb every, anything these days, which I think yeah. is more. It gives you more freedom, but at the same time, it's less expressive in in a, in a sense. Like there's less. I mean, there's not as much that separates Assassin's Creed. From other games nowadays than it did in twenty seven uh, in two thousand seven, um, like the the, the Assassin's Creed was more its its own individual thing back then. Whereas now it's more free, um, it's more open movement is much more fluid. I feel, um, but I mean, it, it I sort do, of lost that. I do wonder, I do wonder how no users. I don't want to say demands, but like preferences have changed. Um, I've read, I don't, I don't remember where the like um, newer players, like players that are younger, are much more used to be able to do everything immediately, and they want like much more instant gratification. I feel like such an old sod saying this, <laughs> rather than, but like people who started playing when games were still, you know, trying to find their footing, are a bit more used to like having to deal with controls that were not fluid and immediate and like could like and you could do everything immediately um but i i think that that's maybe also like a a, a byproduct of how the products have developed because yeah, but also the, the, the audience yeah i mean the people who yeah. played these games when they came out like when they were kids they grow up and they get a job and they don't have time and they need games like the new Assassin's Creed, where they don't have to think as much as they did in the previous ones. Like the uh, the ones who the people who were young when when they play Assassin's Creed one or two, like they had time to figure out how to climb all of the different towers. Oh yeah. But nowadays we have less time, and we just need to find oh there's a structure up. We we get to the top in like two seconds. I have so to say. I can't play the first one because the commands are terrible. Yeah. I hate them. So I never play the first one because I can't get used to the control. I played the second one, I played like the Ezio trilogy, I played all the others. The first one is just too bad for me. I cannot. Yeah. I cannot. What I, what I hate about the first one is that there's no subtitles. I really don't like that. Also, you That's drown? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he can't swim, Elta. Yeah, did they have this in-universe reason for it? Which it's it's, it's horrible, I think. But it it it's, uh, it, 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 it it that's a stupid game mechanic that he can't swim. 
Yeah, right. I mean, you're born in a land that has the sea and rivers. Yeah. You're supposed to know how to yeah. swim, one would assume. If you can jump in haystacks from like 100 meters high, you can swim. <laughs> That's very true. That's very true. Yeah, the only... uh, also, wait, are we finding out his new job? Yes. Yeah, this is his new job. So we're going to get we're gonna get introduced to Nathan is now. He has He's quit the treasure hunting business. And mm. he's, he works for... Um, I don't really understand exactly what this company is that he works for. They're a salvage company, I guess. Yeah, they are. Still kind of... Um... Yeah, so he's still using some of his skills. He's still like doing a kind of physical job that involves doing slightly dangerous things, but mm. it's... Uh... Um, Bill, would you define this an alt act job? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is a good example of an alt act <laughs> job for sure. Yeah, this is a maybe if you went to if you went to a school for underwater archaeology, this would be considered right. an alt act mm. job. I have a minor in underwater archaeology. I have a minor in oh wow! As an undergraduate, I had to, I did learn I did scuba diving lessons and uh, it was fun. I've never used it. I've never had a chance to really wow. actually. I would underwater. I would have I would have loved to do that, uh, but I'm terrified of deep waters. Oops. I'm like, no, I can't. I can't. In another life, maybe. Excellent. Push the wrong button. Find another. What so, did we find? What is is it, this is a fun one, right? This is like, I think this is a joke, oh, right? Oh, that's cool. This oh, is kind of a oh, gag. Oh, it's our yeah. coin. Oh, my God. Oh, it's my it is his contemporary archaeology. Right? It's, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Indeed. It's a contemporary yeah. archaeology, and it's it's also like a little bit of a, I, you know, I think it's, it's ludo narratively harmonious, right? It's like, whoa, this, re- yeah. this, is, this is thematic for now his job is to be a normal guy, right? And he finds normal things. Although while I was diving, I also found this shiriki shark trinket, they called it. <laughs> I don't know what that was doing. <laughs> there, but yeah, it's kind of cute. Yeah. We've already, missed, we've already all... missed two treasures I'm seeing from the list here. So yeah, well. this is a very pretty, pretty uh, shark. It also kind of looks like, I'm sorry, this is, this is terrible. The bus from Totoro. When Totoro becomes, uh, <laughs> when the, the giant cat becomes the, cat the boss that it has. <laughs> the cat bus that has, has, has testicles, that one. Is <laughs> famously, famously. Exactly. Uh, uh, someone in the chat is asking, has the amount of waiting to play while story sequences play out changed much since the early Uncharted AC? Uh, yeah. Uh, I would say, in, intuitively, in AC? I would say yes. Uh, but I haven't done any research for it to be in it specifically. Like in, in um, Assassin's Creed 2, you literally have the um, like you can play you can play from like birth, basically. Uh, yeah, you that's the game starts with your beat. The game with starts your with birth. your birth. They're like, oh, it's, it's, press these to move your leg. Those are the only Assassin's Creed. Fucking fu- weird. It's fucking weird. The only Assassin's Creed game I've played are the, is the Ezio trilogy, which I played uh. in Florence when I was an undergraduate. I studied abroad in oh. Florence, and I wow. had so much fun running around Florence and um, seeing all the sights. Uh, I'm just wandering around, like taking in this view because I know we have to end soon, and I don't want to continue yeah. the story too much. Oh yeah. Also, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it is now. Now it's like um, more game than cinematics. Um, some um, cinematics are. I, would I mean, say uh, at least for HD. No, for Assassin's yeah, but, Creed is like yeah, but Assassin's Creed is a lot of play. So huge. I mean, I would say like in this game, there's more cinematic per gameplay section than there was in Uncharted 1. Okay. Yeah, I, I, because I was going to agree I, with you. I think in this game, you're right. I think there's actually more cutscenes with each yeah. new game. Uh, Uncharted 1 is like, frankly, kind of a boring game. It's like very long stretches yeah. of like running down hallways and yeah. cover shooting. Uh, and uh, it's it, whereas the, as the games have gone on, they've gotten more cinematic, not less. Interestingly, yeah. Um, I mean, these games, Assassin's Creed is a different story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm also, wondering like, if this you're is right. A, in the, the person in chat, you have the question of does walking around count as play as opposed to more intensive sequences? Similarly, like in Odyssey, um, when you're talking to characters, the the the, the, the camera shifts to like uh, uh, I mean, you can see it's, it's in, in close up. Whereas in Origins, for example, when you're talking to someone, it remains in the view of uh, when, when you're just w- running around and you can just hear and you can see the, the subtitles. So does that, in Odyssey, does that count as a, as a cutscene? If you're choosing yeah. the, the dialogue options, I mean... You right, and also, it. like, does, does going around on a ship count as playing? I mean, yes, because yeah. your crew is singing. 
Mm-hmm. So I, it's 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 something that's worth investigating. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I did find that. I mean, there is this article. I mean, um, what you call it? Like a, a, a two, like a, a diptych <laughs> or something like like uh, like a two-parter article uh, mm-hmm. of of articles by uh, Barry Ip on games and narrative, and that says that in general. I mean, um, I mean, he studies a couple of games, uh, and, and he says that uh, at, at the, in the games he studied. Um, like the first act of a game is only like, and, and the third act, they're only like one percent of the entire game's um, length. Whereas the in games, the second act of the story is elongated to ninety-eight percent, uh, which I think in contemporary games is not the case anymore. Like as we see here, we we are in chapter three, three. I think, uh, and and even in chapter four later. Um, we are still in the first act, I would mm-hmm. say, because there's so much prologue mm-hmm. and backstory. And this game has 22 chapters. So I would not say that it's only like 1% at each ending. I mean, at each part um, side of the of the beginning or ending of the story. Yeah. So I, I would say that, like Bill also said, like the games have become more cinematic. They focus more on story than the actual gameplay sometimes, which for better is it for better or worse. But it's something that's definitely worth investigating more. I wonder where we're supposed to be here. Yeah. It's cool looking. Also, where are where, where is it again? Um, Did it say? I don't remember. But is it? It's a cool old. Uh, there, there. It's in America somewhere. We're back in. Yeah, America. yeah, it is. Somewhere. Yeah. Is I mean, is this supposed to be? Is this supposed to be like Worcester or something? I, I could buy that. Um, I, 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 I think I looked it up when I was playing it, but I forgot. Um, yeah, this is a good thing to know because I. Cool looking old, um, looks like an old, you know, I, I could buy this as like a New England mill town or something. Mm-hmm. But I could also mm-hmm. buy that this is maybe supposed to be like down in the Chesapeake somewhere, maybe. Okay. I think um, it was like some, some place around Michigan. I don't, I don't, oh, Michigan. Oh, interesting. Um, but I, I'm not sure anymore. Uh, oh, it's New Orleans. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It's, it's a bit more oh, south. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Okay, yeah, now that ar- now that architecture makes a whole lot more sense. Yeah, I yeah. See that. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't moved the story on because I know we were supposed to wind down. and uh, But I leave you guys in charge of that sort of question, so. All right, yeah. So, uh, one second. I'm trying to... trying to figure out one thing one second uh alex you're not in control of the sasa um twitch account right now right i can if can you the... can you yeah. because what well, we well. can do is um once we finish uh we can send everyone to raid uh ludo history who's playing assassin's oh. Creed Valhalla, dawn of ragnarok Ooh. yeah or you know since we are we are buddies and everything else and it's always nice to to have a raid um and you know, I'll I'll write I'll text you <laughs> the command to start yeah. the raid. Oh, we're gonna do oh okay. fun fun. Well, maybe I, maybe <laughs> I could do since we've got a moment. Uh, I could do another pitch. You guys should go to Video Game Archaeology. You should subscribe. You should do that. Mm-hmm. You should oh do yeah, that. yes. Uh, leave us your links um, in yeah. the chat. Uh, we will you know we'll put them up and everything else. Um, next week, same place same time yeah um we will be here again uh we will play for a little longer uh this, today we were a little late but you know technology a computer exploded uh, yes. you know obs was not working um we had no idea what the fuck we were doing it's okay it's fine it happens it happens but um thanks a lot um same bad channel same bad hour so 2 p.m eastern standard time standard uh, 2 p.m boston eastern time, time. Yeah. <laughs> let's put it this way 2 p.m on the east coast mm-hmm. uh, in being town um and connecticut um yeah we will be here bill thank you so much for agreeing to start this i'm at, this was uh, like so much fun i had a blast <laughs> we, and this is this great. was this was fantastic we are sending everyone over uh for more uh, myths and rituals um and we will see you next time uh same time same yeah. place uh well slightly earlier uh not to 30 <laughs> again thank you alex for uh being here from isolation <laughs> yeah COVID. thank you chat for being so active um we love that. We're always nervous when we start a new series. Uh, and yeah, we will, we'll see you all on the other side.
Yeah. Right now we can we can stop the streaming. So. Bye everyone. <laughs> All right. Bye. I'm gonna Bye. I'll I'll quit the streaming and have a great week, mm-hmm. everybody.